Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how we can import GPS data into Google Earth. Now GPS data can come in many different file formats and extensions. The most common file formats include CSV, which stands for Comma Separated Values, which is basically just a text file that contains the name of points, their coordinates and other information such as elevations or descriptions. Now we've already covered how we can import CSV files into Google Earth and this is under the importing survey data video so if you're interested please make sure to check that session out. Another common file format is the shapefile. We have also covered how to import those kinds of files into Google Earth in their own video so again if you're interested you can check that session out. And lastly the other most common file format is the GPX file format. So for example, if you've captured GPS data with your smartphone or with a handheld GPS device, in all likelihood, this is one of the most common file formats that those applications and devices are going to be exporting the data to. So this video is specifically concerned with importing GPX data, and this is what we're going to be looking at now. Now, we're not going to go into a lot of detail on the different smartphone applications or handheld devices that you can use to capture GPX data. However, I have included a list of smartphone applications that you can check out. These are all applications that we have tried and tested over the years, and this is why I have included them in this list. For example, if you're going to be mapping a site, I can wholeheartedly recommend the GPS Kit offline GPS tracker application, which is available for both iOS and Android. This is the application that we've been using over many years and that we recommend. It is excellent for capturing waypoints and embedding them with additional data, including even geotagged photos. So you could then export that data out towards Google Earth directly as a KMZ if you prefer, and you can also export it out as a GPX. If you have captured any photos, then you can also attach those to the KMZ and you can view those photos inside of Google Earth at the location where you captured them at when you were on the site. So this is a very neat feature of that application. Most of these other applications on here don't really have the capability to export to KMZ, but they can export out to GPX. And so they're more useful for instances where you just want to track your movements or maybe you have captured some waypoints or points of interest that you then want to transfer over into Google Earth. And finally, at the very bottom, I have included a link to the Bad Elf GNSS Surveyor device. This is a very neat little device that can be connected to your phone or tablet, and it's going to increase the accuracy of your device's inbuilt GPS. Now, they claim that it's going to output around one meter of positioning accuracy, and we are talking about horizontal accuracy here. I'm not sure what the vertical accuracy is that this device can output but we have been testing it out over several years and we can confirm that it does support a one meter horizontal accuracy by default if you're wondering your phone is most likely going to be around five to ten meter of horizontal accuracy now with all of that said we can finally take a look at how we can import the gps data into google earth now with all of that said we can finally take a look at how we can import gpx data into google earth for this purpose i'm going to be using one of the tracks that i captured when i was out and about hiking using the komoot app so from within the app i simply exported my tracks later as a gpx file and if i go to my desktop we can see the file here now there are a couple of ways by which i can import this file into google earth one way will be to simply drag and drop it in the viewport but another way is through the tools menu so if i expand the tools menu then i can choose gps and this is the way that i'm going to do it this time so i'm just going to click on gps now from the importing tab here is where you can choose how you want to import the data. If like me, you have the data on a file somewhere on your hard drive, you can choose the import from file option. But if your data is on a handheld GPS device, like let's say a Garmin, then you can choose Garmin from the list of devices here. And then you can plug your device or connect it to your laptop using one of the USB ports. And then once you click on the importing button here, 
Kugorf is going to detect that you have a Garmin device connected to your computer and it's going to allow you to import any tracks that you have on your device. In this case, I'm going to import from file. So this is the option that I'm going to choose. Then you can choose whether you want to import waypoints, tracks or routes or just one of those. In this case, I want to import everything that I have on my file. I'm not exactly sure what was captured. I imagine that it's just the tracks, but if there are no routes or web points, then those are not going to be imported anyway. Then you can choose how you want this data to be visualized inside of Kugorf. If you want the data to be displayed as a simple path, then you can choose KML line strings. But if you want to import other data that may have been captured by your application or device, such as the direction of movement, your speed, or the time that a waypoint was captured at, then you can choose to output the data as KML tracks. And this is what I'm going to do in this case. So I'm going to both output the data as KML line strings and as KML tracks. I want to have the option to turn off the tracks if I don't need them and just have the path. Now, by default, this option to adjust altitudes to ground height is going to be toggled on. What it's going to do is it's going to cause Google Earth to make all of your paths and tracks stick to the terrain, regardless of whether the 3D terrain is turned on or off. But if your paths or tracks have been embedded with elevation data and you want to visualize them in 3D space, you should untoggle this option. In this case, I'm going to keep it on because I want the tracks to stick to the ground. And I'm simply going to click on import. Google Earth is going to ask for the location of the file that I want to import. I'm going to select it from my desktop and click on open. Now it's going to tell us that it loaded a number of tracks with a number of track points. I'm going to click OK on that. Now we can see our tracks in the viewport and also under the list of places. I'm going to expand this folder out and we can see that we have both the points captured and the path. Because if you remember when we were importing this file, we chose to import both the tracks and the path itself. So now I can choose which one I want to display. I can also expand the folder containing all of the points that were captured. And then I can click on any one point to see the metadata that was captured for each of them, including the direction of travel and the speed of travel, altitude and so on. And with that done, I think this pretty much covers it for importing GPX data into Google Earth. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.